All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone, depending upon what time zone you're in. My name is Nick, and uh, we're going to get started with a new session, the sixth session of this of the digital marketing training. I would request uh, each one of you to do type in across in the chat window if you are able to hear me loud and clear, and also if you can see my screen, please. Please acknowledge by saying yes. You can hear me loud and clear. All right. Thanks, Sovik. Thank you, Atanu. Morning, Anuj. Morning, Atanu. And morning. Good morning, Sovik. Perfect. Good morning, Mukul. And Anuj, you can also hear. That's great. And all right, Rami. Thanks for acknowledging. And thank you, Anuja. Perfect. Uh, so to begin with today's session, uh, like always, we'll start with a recap. Okay. We'll, we'll start with a recap of what was being covered across uh, in, during the last session, which happened across on, uh, which happened across yesterday, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about. I mean, I'm going to take your doubts, your queries, your questions, and then we'll move further with today's session, guys. Uh, yesterday also, my throat wasn't really, uh, you know, helping me, and today it's way too worse. So I'm not sure till what time I'm going to continue. I'll, I'll I'll try my level best to you know uh, provide training to. Uh, till the end, but let's see how, how does it really go across, okay? So let's do a recap. I would request everyone to please use the chat window to type in across the topics which you remember from the yesterday's session, which we have covered. All right, Ramnik says keyword mapping distribution of the keywords, the meta keywords and the focus keyword, yes, absolutely are me. Atanu says it was keyword mapping, the plugin, which was the SEO Yoast. I hope everybody remembers the name of the plugin, which is SEO Yoast. And Atanu says meta keywords, focus keyword, absolutely we spoke about that. So it says the title tag we did understood, absolutely correct. <clears throat> Atanu says the SEO on page, off page, so off page, yes, we did spoke about what exactly it is. And thanks to Danu. So it says the metadata, absolutely, yes. The meta keywords and the meta description, basically. Yes, you're saying meta description. And Ramnik says the on-page optimization and the off-page, which are the two major pillars of search engine optimization. That's what we spoke about. That is correct. And Danu says title tag and meta description. And so it says the description part, absolutely, yes. Anything else? Yes, pipe symbol. Yes, that is correct. So pipe symbol is one of the parameters through which we make sure that the perfect title tag is being set up across. What are the other things other than the pipe symbol which we have to consider while the formation of title tag? So just trying to ask each one of you with regards to the formation of the title tag, what all parameters do we have to keep in mind other than the Pipe symbol. All right, so Sovic says it was the character limit, 50 to 60, minimum 50 and maximum 70. That is correct. And Atanu says the content, the character has to be within 50 to 70 for title tag. That's another one. Yes, absolutely correct. What else? So there were like three to four different character, uh, different parameters on the basis of which the title tag has to be built up. Sovic says the keyword. Yes, the focus keyword has to be there at most once. And it says always end the tag with the website name or the brand name. That is absolutely correct. And so it says the focus keyword needs to be there. That is correct. And Ramnik says space will be counted as a character. Absolutely, yes. While we are counting across the characters, even a space is being counted as a character. Right, so there was a pipe symbol, the usage of the focus keyword, the character limit, Right, uh, these were the things which were and, and brand name or the website name at the end, right, for the title tag. That says title tag contains content of the web page. Absolutely correct. So the kind of content, the, uh, the stuff which we type in across in the title tag is uh, gonna be all about what the web page is describing, is gonna be all about what the web page is all about. All right, that's correct. And how about meta description? So what were the parameters which we spoke with regards to meta description, guys? 
Do you want to go ahead and uh, talk about that also? All right, so Savik says it was 130 to 156 characters. That is absolutely correct. Minimum 130, maximum 156 characters. That's what the search engine really loves. If you go beyond that, less than that, more than that, then search engine is not really going to like that. And which says meta description should be 130 to 156. Yes. And the focus keyword here as well. So the usage of focus keyword also needs to be there within meta description. Right. And what sort of content should come in in the meta keywords? Yeah, sorry, in the meta, meta description. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm having a bad throat, guys. So it just says relevant one as according to each page. That should be the kind of content. And it just says focus key, which should be part of the meta, meta description. Yes. And Anuta says all are requested to please uh, type in by using uh, every one option. All right. <coughs> So guys, uh, it's a request to everyone to please use the chat window with the selection as everyone. As you can see while you're typing across in the chat window, right? You can use the everyone option. Anut says everyone option is not available on my chat window. Oh, is that so? Let me just go ahead and uh, promote each one of you to ask panelists. Maybe then it would work. All right, so I can see uh, uh, some more participants have joined in. Guys, you can turn off your uh, videos. All right, I'm promoting you across as panelists. Uh, so we can stop the video part so that it doesn't really take a lot of bandwidth okay and so i i just wanted to check who's joining by the name as shivi is that shivani or someone else and who is joining by the name as swango is that rahul swango triple four is that rahul can you type in the chat window and and who has joined us uh, shivi can can you let me know your name in the chat window please All right, so I'm just going ahead and uh, stopping the videos, guys. I'm promoting you across as panelists so that you can. All right, thanks. It's Rahul as Swango. And uh, who has joined in as the screen name as Shivi? Guys, I've promoted you across each one of you as panelists so that you can use the everyone chat window now. The everyone chat window would be there. All right, that's Shivani. Perfect. Okay, so I was talking about. I was talking about meta description, guys. What would, what are the different parameters which we need to keep in mind in order to get the meta description? So you spoke about that. And the last thing which I was asking you about meta description was, what kind of content should meta description have? We discussed this yesterday. That's why I'm asking across. It's a, again, it's a recap which is going on right now, guys. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's still a recap, which is going on. So we did discuss this. The kind of content which should be there in the meta description should be what? Anyone who remembers that? Shall I go ahead and um, scroll up in the document which I have shared with you? Well, it has to be about the unique selling propositions about your product, right? Something which is just like an ad copy. Do you guys remember? So you need to treat meta description just like an ad copy, highlight the USPs or the benefits or the attractive feature. Why is it being said that the attractive features of your product should be used across this? Because if this content is, uh, an, if this content is attractive, People are liking the stuff which is written over here. If there's some 
uh, you know, offer which you are promoting across that there's something good uh, about your product which no one else is providing, then it would lead to more clicks. Despite of the fact that your, you know, search engine, your, your website is ranking in the search engine result, maybe in the second position, third or the fourth, still there would be more chances for getting across clicks, you know, more clicks if you have a great meta description. A great meta description in the sense it needs to have something unique about your product if you're offering. So it says it should not be part of the web page content. Well, it can be. It has to be a mix of both. It has to be a mix of both. All right. Perfect. So that was about meta description. Meta tag description. I'm moving further. And we spoke that we spoke about the last thing with regards to meta description. That focus keyword also needs to be there at most once. All right. Now you can see you are naming on the screen. What all things did we discuss with regards to URL naming? Guys, can you uh, name out? Can you pinpoint the stuff with regards to URL naming? All right, so we say it should not be, all right, so the hyphen, the use of hyphen, absolutely. Right, so that was one thing, what else? So I would want more people to, Participate in this. I know just says hyphen focus keyword should be there. Absolutely, yes. The focus keyword should be there, and uh, use of hyphen is to be use of hyphen whenever there is a space between two words. Whenever there is a space between two words, then there should be a hyphen. Right. That is absolutely correct. And also the other thing which we spoke about the URL in order to make across the uh, URL friendly, we have to use a uh, hyphen and do not have to use any special characters like at the rate, uh, hash symbol, the dollar symbol, the percentage symbol and so forth. I hope this, this is uh, uh, good guys. Are you are able to remember what we did discuss yesterday? So in order to make across your search engine, search engine URLs, in order to make across a URL, sorry, URLs of your web pages, search engine friendly, you have to make sure that there is no usage of underscore, there is no usage of special characters within the URL naming, plus there has to be a hyphen being used whenever there is a space between two words. And also the other thing is, make sure you are using a cross focus keyword in the URL naming. All right, what is the other thing which is, uh, so the other thing is alt tag or the alternative text. What is that used for guys? We are still doing a recap. I'm asking you questions. So for 15 minutes, we're going to be doing that and then we'll take uh, your, I'm going to take your queries and then we'll move further. So it says alternative text and alt tag is used across for images. Absolutely. So search engines or the crawlers or the bots or the spiders, whatever you want to call these, the different names, right? They are, they are, uh, you know, blind. They, they, they do not see things the way humans do. So the images cannot be read across by cannot be read across by spiders the way humans are able to read it across, right? So in order to let the spiders or the search engine or the bots know about an image, we have to use across a tag which is attached to every single image and that's called alternate text, right? Ramnik says we use it so that search engine can read the image. Absolutely correct, Ramnik. So in order to make the search engines read the image, we use this across option and the kind of uh, text which we're going to put in across in the alternative text bar is most probably is in most of the scenarios going to be the thing which is uh, which is being described by the image. Something which is described by the image is going to be put in across in the in the alternative text only, and also if it's gelling well with your focus keyword or any of your meta keywords, then it's a good thing. So try to use across images which are uh, depicting the same message which is there in the entire web page and it's also uh, you know going well with the focus keyword and the other meta keywords. I would just say for images so that Google can crawl and identify it. Absolutely yes. So we understood this. There is no parameter with regards to uh, alt text, uh, you know, whether it's uh, the correct limits or usage of uh, any pipe symbol or usage of any hyphen, there's nothing of that sort. It's just that it has to be the focus keyword. Uh, if, if uh, you know, it's gelling well, the, the first and the foremost thing is that 
the words which you put in across in the alternative text has to be similar to has to go in line with what the image is saying an alternative text is going to be one per image so if you've got three images per web page each one of the image will have its own alternative text or tab right so for one image it's going to be one on tab that is correct all right so that's great i like the excitement and which says also we discussed about the heading tags and they're going to be h1 to let's six so look go ahead with your question absolutely so head tags was the second uh, another thing we did discuss that there are more tags which we need to make sure that they are being utilized and we are, we are using it for every web page and these are called header tags as you can see uh, from h1 to let's six that's the maximum plus the size the font size of heading one is the biggest and as we'll go further down from to from heading one till heading six the font size keeps getting decreased the idea behind using these header tags is to uh, shape across your content in a very uh, good looking manner that's one plus also uh, with the usage of these tags the search engines also love to you know uh, scroll across pages which are well shaped well um, designed and so forth all right so here comes in a question keyword density also we discussed absolutely yes we did discuss keyword density welcome to the session pratik and atul says can google recognize all right so here's a question katham says can google recognize the text written in the image like budget in that image through all tag process so in that image the budget thing which is written over here in the image will not be recognized but if you type it in the alt tag then it will be recognized whatever you write across in the image is never going to be recognized no matter even if you type across a hell lot of content not even a single word it will recognize if anything which is typed across in the alternative text only can be recognized make sense okay any other question any other query guys please feel free to use the chat window perfect thanks to me for acknowledging so we did discuss the header tags just now one second <clears throat> then we did discuss the other thing which was keyword density keyword density i made you understand that it is a matrix which we calculate for every specific keyword which we are embedding in our content while we are writing content for our web pages we have to make sure that the meta keywords which we have chosen they need to be inserted within the content but but in what frequency this needs to be inserted every particular keyword which we are every particular meta keyword which we are inserting in the content of the entire web page we have to make sure that there is a certain frequency there is a certain uh right frequency being maintained and that's 0.8% to 1% guys just give me one second i'm just going to be on hold for a minute uh having a tough time speaking uh having a bad throat just have just give me a minute i'm going to be on mute for a minute
I really apologize, guys. I'm sorry. So I had to uh, clear my throat and then come back. So having a tough time with my throat today. All right. So uh, keyword density. We were speaking about that. So like I did mention, for every single keyword, there is a keyword density which is going to be measured. 0.8% to 1% is something which is good. Anything more than that is harmful. Had it been that I have put, I have been teaching and training you search engine optimization like uh, five, six years back, maybe 2012, 2011, that point of time, 3%, 4% keyword was something which was acceptable. But as of now, uh, because of various different uh, updates, various different algorithm updates, so uh, we'll, we'll speak about that also. So Google keeps changing its algorithm. Google keeps changing the way it, uh, you know, decides on which website is going to be on the up on the first position and which website is going to be on the second position. Whatever we are learning, whether it's regards to on page and off page, uh, you know, all these things which I'm teaching and training you, these are as for the new algorithm updates, guys. All right. So, uh, you know, one question which people do uh, come up with when I say this, they say that, okay, once we are done with the training, what's next? How are we going to go ahead and cope up with the other algorithm changes which will come? Uh, you know, won't it really be a difficult thing that, you know, we again would have to go undergo the training again or what? That is not the thing. You don't need to undergo the training again if there are further more changes. I'll provide you a lot of resources which you can refer to on daily basis. At least spend half an hour, uh, you know, reading across those resources so that you can be updated about what's happening in the search engine world, what's happening in the internet marketing world altogether. And how do you really go ahead and uh, upgrade your knowledge? How do you really go ahead and uh, you know, implement the new thing instead of just focusing on the existing one only. Anuj has got a question and says, why is it harmful if the keyword density is? All right, so search engine says that if you're putting across a specific keyword more than one person as a keyword density, which is uh, more than once for every hundred words, search engines consider it as keyword stuffing or keyword spamming. So in short, there is a thumb rule which search engine says, Search engine says that do not try to create content for the search engines or, or you know, do not try to create content in a manner that will help you to improve your ranking into search engines. Always focus on the end reader. The person who's going to come to your website is going to read the content on your website. If that content is giving value to that reader and that reader is sticking onto your website and liking and engaging you know, getting engaged with that content, your job is done. Your job is done. That's what the search engine says. See, every time you do something on your website, there is, there are, there are going to be two people whom you're going to really keep in mind as a marketer. One is going to be the website visitor and the other is going to be the search engine, you know, algorithm or the search engine spider, basically. So, there has always been a debate whom should we really focus more on should we you know make changes to our website keeping in mind the search engine algorithm or should we keep change or uh, things in our website keeping in mind the uh you know the website visitor so the thumb rule says that it has to be the website visitor which has to be kept in mind if you're providing value if you're doing if you're doing everything on your website which is meeting across the needs meeting across the uh wants of your uh, potential audience of people who are visiting your website, the job is done automatically. So that's just a one thumb rule, which I'm letting you know. Hope that answers your question, Anuj. How does it really harm? Um, all right. Okay, so I did make you understood the, with the calculation part also. If there is one specific keyword which is repeated five times and the total number of words which are written in a specific web page is 500, so the keyword density for that specific keyword for that specific web page is going to be five divided by 500 multiplied by 100 because it's a percentage thing. Ultimately, it's going to be one person. Anuja says, I try to make URL naming and try to put the keyword in it, but now we but how we can do that, just suppose about us page or home page, how will it happen or, uh, or the URL naming for in, internal pages? If yes, then how? All right, sure. I'll just show it again. 
Uh, I did show it yesterday, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll recap that part. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm opening across the WordPress admin for my website, and I'm going to take across one of the pages for which I'm going to show you how can I edit the URL label. Well, for the home page, you cannot do that, but for the internal pages, about this pages, you can. So I'm going to the post section where all my blog posts are there, and I'm going to pick and choose one single blog post and we'll show you how the URL naming can be changed. So let's say this one. All right, so there's several blog posts which I have come up with. I'm going ahead and clicking on to edit. All right, so considering that there is a page already in place and there is a specific URL naming for it, I can go ahead and change the URL naming by going right over here, Anuja. Do you see that option which says edit? Right? Um, all right, so this is permalink basically, and the URL for the page is right over here. And right next to the page URL, it is the edit button. I'm going ahead and clicking on to edit. And uh, what you can see is the entire page URL, which you can go ahead and, uh, you know, do the change. I can go ahead and change the content right over here. So the URL naming actually gets changed. I can make sure that the focus keyword comes uh, within the URL, plus there is hyphens being used for depicting the space between two words. Let me know if that helps you. Uh, in case you want me to go ahead and open your website and show that first, I can do that as well. Okay, that helps. Let, okay, do you want me to open your website and show it to you? Passion for Fab, I think that's your website. And let's see if the WordPress credentials for this is saved across or not. If in case, all right, so do you mind sharing across the WordPress credentials once again? Uh, I think it's getting logged in. Oh, it's already. So it's, no, you, it, it's absolutely fine. You don't need to do that. See, I'm going to the pages section. I'm clicking on all pages. I'm showing it once again. So let's say this particular page, which says ethnic wear, I am going ahead and clicking on to edit. All right, do you see this edit section? So you can go ahead and click on to edit. And let's say your focus keyword is ethnic wear. You're, you're doing good with regards to that. You want to change uh, the URL naming now. You want to add on more more uh, words. You want to delete or subtract certain words. You can go ahead and do that, whatever you want to. Hope this helps. All right. Now you're saying yes. My question is that how can we, how we can match with keywords or uh, okay, we can add it according to the keyword file. Yes, absolutely. Whatever keyword you're using across in the focus keyword section. All right. Make sure that focus keyword. Okay. Now, can you see your meta keyword section is also also right up over here. So what what did you do in order to get this meta keywords? Right. How did you do it? Was it through the configuration which I showed you yesterday? Through that process, it happened or some other way? You went to the settings part. The settings part of the SEO Yoast the Yoast plugin, right? And what section did you go to? The advanced tools. Which section does enable the advanced settings? All right, you went to the advanced settings and then you enabled it. Then you clicked onto the others. Enable breadcrumbs, permalinks, All right, so there's no other section over here. Click on the dashboard, all right. All right, so dashboard of SEO. And right up over here. Right, so this is the dashboard. And 
here you are saying there is this general all right let me just okay guys so why i'm asking uh anuj about this is because this is something you follow the google instructions right so this is actually the configuration wizard i believe that's what you would have done in order to get that done is that so did you went in and did the step by step uh seo yoast configuration right so that's that's something which you did and it you got that perfect so i hope your question is being answered makes sense i can go ahead and uh, close this right maybe you might have some other questions so let me let this be open okay so keyword density was the last thing and now any other can you repeat again anuj says all right anuj let me know uh, what section what part do you want me to repeat same as we discussed i'm sorry what did we we discuss so much do you want me to repeat the title tag part do you want me to repeat the focus keyword but i'm sorry you have to tell me what part do we need to do, uh do i need to repeat again the title tag but we discussed the title tag already in way too much detail what part of title tag is not clear can you pull out your notes can you pull out i mean can you just be specific uh, so that it helps me anuj like what section of anuj uh, what section of title do you want me to repeat i can more i would be more than happy to assist you with that So what part of title can I help you with? Like, I mean, there were there have been quite many things which we have been discussing. Uh, if you can let me know your question, Anuj, I can surely answer that. The next thing, uh, I'm moving ahead. You can let me know your question whenever uh, you have a question. Just put that across in the chat window, and I'll answer that for sure. The sitemap or XML guys is the next thing with regards to on page. Now, this might sound a bit technical thing, but this, there's nothing technical right up over here. This is a file, basically. Okay. Sitemap.xml is a file which every search engine optimizer is responsible for uh, creating, getting it created, and getting it uploaded onto the website server. Now, why is it, uh, why is it that the search engine optimizers are responsible for creating and uploading it across the answer is again the same it is for strengthening the seo campaign it is done across this procedure is also done across for the purpose of making our website optimized further all right that optimized further for the keywords which we have chosen across the sitemap.xml that is the name of the file which has to be created and I'll, I'll tell you everything how it is to be created how it has to be updated and so forth first of all as you can see it says .xml which is the extension of a file there are several extensions of a file as we all know for a word document the extension is .doc for an excel sheet right the extension is .xls right for so many others, uh, for, for an image, it's JPG, GIF, PNG, and so forth. Similarly, there's one more file extension that's called XML, and the full form of XML is extended markup language. We do not absolutely dot talk about EXC, several others. That's correct, Pratik. Now, so dot XML stands for extended markup language. We do not need to learn anything related to XML. All we have to do is we need to know what exactly it is, why it is to be done, how it is to be done, and uh, how to really derive benefit out of it. That's what I'll tell you. First of all, what it is, what it is, it is a file which has an extension as XML. And this file basically consists of 
URLs, as in the web addresses of every single web page which is part of our website. So as you all know, every website is made up of hundreds of web pages or thousands of web pages, depending upon the size of the website. So today if I have my website, maybe I have 1,000 pages. Maybe you guys have come up with your new website that might have only five pages as of now or 10 pages. But as you move further, as uh, you know, you keep increasing the size of your website, the number of pages will keep getting more, right? The number of pages will keep getting added. Today, maybe your website is standing on five pages and tomorrow it could be seven and a year later it could be 100 or 200 or 500 or 1000, whatever. Now the idea is that this particular file is going to be going to provide URL of every single web page. Okay, every single web page of our website is going to have its own unique URL, right? URL as in the the web address, basically. So this web, this particular file will consist of all the URLs and the reason behind creating this file with all the URLs is to make sure that the search engine is aware of every single web page of our website. Sometimes what happens, whenever search engine comes onto our website, it is not able to detect certain pages of our website. So if my website has got 100 pages today, without a sitemap file, let's say, without a sitemap file, my website is running and it has got 100 pages. The moment search engine comes onto my website, it is able to detect only 92 pages. The remaining eight pages, search engine is not able to detect uh, at all due to any reason, due to X, Y, Z reason, all right? It doesn't, it is not connected. These eight pages are not well connected with the other pages. This could be a reason or there could be any other reason. Now these eight pages are always getting left out and uh, they're not getting recognized by search engines. And as a result, they are not able to rank, rank across in the search results. So that's the reason why in order to strengthen the process of search engine, in order to make sure that every web page of your website is being communicated across to the search engine, there is this file called sitemap.xml, every search engine optimizer creates, and even updates on a regular basis. What I mean by updation is, let's say I have created across a sitemap file today. My website is 100 pages strong, and today the sitemap which I have created has got all the 100 pages URL. Okay, I go ahead and create my sitemap, which has got all the 100 URLs of uh, every single web page I have on my website, and it's been uploaded across onto my website. Now, today I am good with my website. Search engine is being communicated that, okay, there are 100 pages and so forth. Now, let's say after uh, 10 weeks, after 10 weeks, this 100 number uh, has increased to 122. Now the 122 uh, number is a new number, right? After 10 weeks or 20 weeks and so forth. So the, the add-on, the 22 more web pages which have been added on, they are not part of the existing sitemap. Now this is the duty of the search engine optimizer to make sure that this sitemap is not just being uploaded once, it's been regularly updated. Regularly updated with uh, new pages being added that should be part of the sitemap new sitemap and if there is any existing web page which has been deleted also that should also be deleted from the sitemap now this might sound like uh, there is a lot of work which needs to be done around it but let me tell you gone are those days when manual process used to happen manual process when I say that you know creating and updating across the XML sitemap on a regular basis and uh, updating it and so forth. In today's SEO world, the sitemap creation and the sitemap updation happens automatically. You just need to go ahead and click onto one single checkbox, which would ask you to enable the sitemap and update it on a regular basis, that's it. It's just one, one button away, that's it. You don't, have to, you don't have to do all that process. I'm just letting you know that this is what sitemap used to be earlier, where the manual process, it, there was an, an there was an entire manual process which was involved and it was a tiresome task. The idea is to let search engine know about every single web page 
which is present on your website right now. And uh, this would always help in crawling and indexing of your entire website in the most effective manner. Crawling and indexing, if I talk about it, is purely uh, the reading of the web pages and storing it across in the database, all right, of the search engines. And just says, if there is no sitemap, Google can't crawl the pages. Well, the answer is uh, the Google will crawl the pages. There is no negative effect uh, with, without uh, sitemap. It's just that the positive thing will not come in. Like I told you, I gave you the example that Without a sitemap, let's say my website has got 100 web pages. Without a sitemap, the search engine is able to detect only 92. So what happens is certain pages are not being detected. Most of the pages are detected without sitemap, but certain pages are not detected. These certain pages which are not detected easily are the ones which are not uh, well connected with the other pages. You know, the, it, there is something called internal linking. The one, so there is a link which is going from one page to the another. Maybe those pages which are not being uh, crawled and indexed easily, those eight pages, they are not part of the, uh, what do you say, the, the menu, the footer, and all those sections. Pradeek says, so sitemap basically stores our web pages URL in its database. Yes, it stores all the URLs, right? To check everything is doing good. Well, uh, it doesn't do anything uh, related to the checking, whether it's doing good or not. Sitemap is just a collection of all the URLs. I'll just give you a glimpse of how it really looks like also, okay? Now, why it is to be done across, I've already answered this. So what part I've answered, the why part, sitemap XML is used, it is, I'm so sorry, one second. I'm gonna be a mute for a second. All right. All right, so the why part, so what part has been covered? The why part, the idea is to get ahead and make our SEO campaign more stronger and search engines do value the sitemap.xml. Now, how it is to be done, either an automatic process or a manual. Manual, I don't want to show you because manual is something which is not used now. Automatic option, I'll show you, and that's the most easiest one. Now, when it should be done. Now, the question is when it should be done. Should, it, should the creation of the XML sitemap be done while the website is getting created or the, while, while the website has been created? Well, uh, as you can read in the point number A, it says it has to be done for a new website when it's in a good shape. So sitemap XML has to be created and enabled across for a new website when the website is ready in full. Make sure you get, you know, do that when the website has been launched. Now consider another scenario where your website has been running for a good number of months or years and so forth. Then in that case, you can straight away go ahead and create the sitemap and uh, you know, uh, get it enabled. Now, certain, in certain instances, people do exclude certain pages from the sitemap. Pages like the payment gateway page, the page where people go in and make the payment. So if you have an e-commerce website, you generally do not want those web pages to be crawled and indexed by the search engines and to be promoted. Maybe the privacy policy page. So people try to exclude those pages also. There are reasons, you know, they don't want to promote it so aggressively. Okay, so now this is uh, overall, uh, a look and feel of how an XML sitemap file really looks like, guys. As you can see, it says XML sitemap and it's been generated by Yoast SEO. Okay, this is for my website. It has, it is showing all the URLs for my website. It, it's showing all the URL. The way I'm gonna look into it is, let me show you live. Yoastcreations.ca, yoastcreations.ca forward slash XML, not sitemap. This should work. All right, so I think there's some other page. Uh, one second, sitemap or XML. All right, 
Yeah, this is the automatic version, right? Whether it's an automatic version or whether it's a manual version, the look and feel is same. So this is this XML sitemap for my website. All right. So there are several sitemaps which have been created, 13 sitemaps. If I'll go ahead and open across one of the sitemap, so these are 13 major bigger sitemaps, guys, okay, which Yoast SEO has all automatically created. Okay, this has been created automatically. I can go ahead and uh, open across one of them. Now it says there are 23 URLs underneath this particular sitemap. And the first one says it's it has got 461 URLs. So these are the overall pages, right, of my website, right? These are the various different web pages of my website and so forth. Now, how do we really get this implemented, guys? It's going to be done with the same uh, plugin, guys, which we have used already. That's the Yoast SEO. What you have to do is the Yoast SEO plugin, which you have already installed, you have to go to that section. I'm Anuja, I'm doing it for your website right now. I'm showing you for your website. You have to go to the SEO dashboard for your website, the SEO Yoast, the SEO Yoast version. All right. And then underneath the SEO Yoast plugin, which we installed yesterday, we'll go ahead and click onto the section called XML sitemap. This is just one click, which we have to do. As you can see, it's already enabled. That's what you have to do. Whenever you're going to implement it across, you have to just make sure that it is that this is implemented, guys. This is enabled. Are we all good? Anyone who's got any question, any doubt, any query can let me know, please. So this has been enabled. All right, so Vic, you've got that. Thanks for acknowledging. Can I get to know from others? Are you good? Can I know in the chat window, guys, are you good so far? Sure, I'll repeat it, Tanu. All right, so Vic, yes, please go ahead with your question. And this is now we can check Now we can check it on our website URL with XML sitemap. Yes, you can. So Anujay, in case you want to check for your website, what you have to do is you have to type in your website name, which is fashionforfab.com forward slash sitemap.xml. All right. This is going to be the default URL. I'm just going to go ahead and repeat it once again. All right, so the moment I've typed this, let's see the sitemap. All right, see, you can, there's a sitemap for your website. It's been created automatically. So Anuja's website has got the sitemap automatically being created. You can go ahead and click onto these and you'll find the URL. So you've got two URLs for the first sitemap. There are three sitemaps which have been created automatically. The second one, has got these many pages about this page fashion and jewelry wedding collection ethnic wear western wear contact us so i say so if i want to include a particular web page let's say the payment page do we you if i want not to include all right do we disable it or there is a process to remove a particular web page from the site map yes there is a process to remove let me just show you that also I'll answer your question. So can you see this section excluded post? Sorry. So it's the same SEO Yoast plugin. I have gone on to XML sitemap and in the general section, I've got it enabled. Now in the excluded post tab, I can go ahead and click right over here. And here is the URL. I can go ahead and type in across the entire URL, which I want to exclude it across from my, from my sitemap. All right. Predict says, shall I leave the session and join again the session? Some problem coming in my Zoom webinar. Oh yes, Pratik, you can go ahead and do that across for sure. Right, Pratik. Uh, if you're able to hear me, you can do that. Right, so Anuja sitemap, I have shown how that has been created for her website. And so if I've answered your question also, that if I want to exclude across certain page from my sitemap, all I have to do is, I have to go to the excluded post section 
and type in the entire URL and then click on to save changes. Those pages would be uh, disabled. Anuj says, how can I install SEO and sitemap on my site, Anuj Jain? Anuj, were you part of the session yesterday? Did you, did you attend yesterday's session? I'm just trying to check. Because yesterday we did uh, install across the SEO Yoast plugin, if you remember, yes. The SEO Yoast plugin which we installed yesterday, it's the same plugin which I'm using across. Right? It's the same plugin which I'm using across. Make sense? Let me know Anuj if you have any further. You were not there. All right, so you can refer to the recording because that's a bit longer process. I would request you to uh, refer to the recording for the same. And uh, let me know in case you have any problem or any query, right? So the recording would be shared across with you uh, this, within this week, right? So that covers across our overall on-page optimization, guys. Excellent site was the last thing. We'll go for a break and then after the break, we'll start with the off-page optimization. With regards to off-page, I have discussed quite many things, all right? Off-page won't take much of a time. Then there would be many more things uh, which could be followed to that. All right, so I would like to take across 20 minutes break, guys, and then after the break, we'll talk further. I think we can leave it. Somebody's on the unmute mode. Can you just make sure that it's Pratik? Pratik, you can just be on mute. I have put it, put you across on mute. All right. All right, guys. So uh, we'll meet after the break. All right. And uh, we'll uh, take, take it further from there, please. So I'm putting myself on to mute.
All right, guys, let's, let's resume further. I'm so sorry. All right, so any questions before we begin across, before we jump on to the off-page optimization? Is there any question which, any query, any question you have? All right, I hope everybody is able to hear me, right? Just trying to check. You guys can hear me, right? If you can acknowledge, all right, perfect. Thanks, Mukul, and thank you so much, Anuj, Anuj and Nick. All right, so we're done with the on page. It's uh, all about these tags and so forth and the sitemap or XML. Now, we're one more thing which I would like to pinpoint from the on-page before I jump on to off-page, guys. There is this file, let me just see if that part is mentioned over here. All right, it is. Now, this is to do with the on-page again. Other than the sitemap file, guys, there is one more file, which is called robots.txt, okay? Now, robots.txt, guys, is a notepad file. As you all know, the, the TXT extension is for the notepad files. And this is an additional file other than the sitemap file, which is search engine optimizer is supposed to be creating across. And the idea behind creating this file is again to get across your SEO campaign, uh, uh, you know, get more stronger, your overall optimization of your website for the search engine becomes stronger. Now, what this file really does is it provides across instructions to the search engines in terms of which all web pages of these uh, website to be indexed and crawled, or which all web pages not to be crawled and indexed. Now, you might say that this is something very similar to what we did in Sitemap. Well, Sitemap was all about helping the search engines to know about various different web pages which are there on your website, which should be crawled and indexed. And I, in the end, I had shown you a tab where in the sitemap only where you can go ahead and mention across the URL which you don't want to be included in the sitemap. The URL which you'll mention over here which you don't want to be part of the sitemap can get crawled or cannot get crawled. That is uh, not really sure. Reason being, if it is not part of if the page which you're going to submit over here, it will not be part of sitemap for sure but it can be detected by search engines on their own as well. It's just that you're not giving preference. Robots.txt has a, a thin, there's a thin line difference between the sitemap, sitemaps, this particular feature and the overall robots.txt. With robots.txt, you're making sure that 100%, 100% uh, it's damn sure that the web page which you will mention in the robots.txt, which is the notepad file, which you'll mention that it should not be part of the search result at all. It will not be. With sitemap, it's just that it will not be part of the sitemap, but it can rank in the search results. It can rank in the search results. Now, the very good example of pages which should not be part of uh, these search results are like the payment gateway pages and the robot and the privacy policy pages and so forth. Now, the way robots.txt is being created and also the uh, way it looks like, I'm showing you that part again. I'm, I'm not again, sorry. I'm showing you that part as well. The way we have seen for sitemaps, similarly, we are seeing it across for robots.txt. Robots.txt and how it is being created and so forth. I'll explain you the non-technical manner for this also. All right, so what I did, I typed in across my website name forward slash robots.txt. That's something which you have to do for your website also. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff which is mentioned over here. This, a lot of stuff which is mentioned over here is actually instructions being given to the search engines, various search engines, uh, not just the Google search engine, but various other search engines also. Other than Google, there are so many search engines. All right, as you can see, XOV, Bot, Wordbox, so many others whose names are being mentioned over here. And we are allowing or disallowing some of those pages from certain uh, search engines and so forth. Ramnik says, so the difference is that sitemaps are HTML based, they're XML based basically. 
pages and robots.txt is a notepad. So that one is an XML based and this is a, uh, yes, the, yes, it is absolutely true. That one you're asking, yes, the answer is to your question is, sitemaps are XML based and uh, the robots.txt is a .txt based. Sitemaps are also HTML versions. There are HTML versions to sitemap also other than uh, XML, but they are no more being used these days. Very less people actually use it. So that's why I'm not uh, talking about the XML sitemap. So sorry, the HTML sitemap, it's only the XML. So this is the only basic difference. The basic difference between sitemap and robots.txt, if I tell you, sitemap is there for the purpose of proper optimization of all the web pages which you want, okay? Those pages to be identified. The robots.txt works on the other side, which is letting the search engines know which pages to be crawled and which pages not to be crawled. So that's the, that's the biggest, that's a major difference. I'm just repeating again, sitemap file is being created and updated for the purpose of letting search engines know which all web pages, what all web pages basically, how many pages, whatever, what all web pages are there on your website. And uh, you know, uh, with that being done, search engines will be able to crawl and index all of them. So for better crawling and indexing, of all the pages which you want, sitemap is the file. For restricting certain pages and making 100% sure that those pages which you want to restrict and not to be crawled, robots.txt help you. So one is on making, pushing the web pages to become stronger in crawling and indexing, that sitemap. The other part which is robot.txt, which that works more towards restricting certain pages not to be crawled and indexed. That is the major difference basically. But all in all, you don't have to really do anything uh, technical in terms of getting these set up. For, for uh, XML sitemap, I've shown you the Yoast SEO plugin works well. You just have to enable it. When it comes down to robots.txt, there are certain plugins available for that also. All you get to do, all you got to do is you have to go to the plugin section once again, click on to add new. All right, so you have to click on to add new and then type in the keyboard which says <coughs> robots. You can type in robots.txt also. All right, so I've already got this one activated on my website. It says virtualrobots.txt. Whenever you're looking for a new plugin, guys, the best thing is to always look for, you know, the number of installs and the rating. So this particular plugin is pretty uh, great in terms of the number of installs and also the rating is good. So it says so for sitemap, the excluding web page part won't restrict the web page to come. Absolutely, it will just make the web page not be part of the sitemap, that's it. It will not restrict to the full, that is absolutely correct. So the restriction of a page not to, not to come on the search result, that gets done best from the robots.txt option only, not from the sitemap. On the sitemap, it's just that uh, those pages which you will restrict, which you will exclude, they will get excluded only from the sitemap. Whether they get excluded from the search results or not, uh, that that's a gamble altogether. All right. In most of the cases they do visible, they do get visible. So just to be hundred percent sure that your website, that your web pages, which you don't want to be uh, there in the search results, make use of the robots.txt. All right. Anuja says, okay, means in sitemap, we can put few pages. We can put few pages not to give preference, but in robots, we want that Google should not crawl through pages by anyhow. That is absolutely correct. That is absolutely correct. You guys have got that now. So if you want certain web pages, not at all by anyhow, those pages, not at all to be crawled and indexed, use sitemap, oh sorry, use robots. I'm sorry. Right. 
So Sawi says side map is necessary, but robots isn't right. Well, both are necessary. It's being said that you use uh, both of them. One is for the uh, giving uh, input to search engines. Sitemap gives input to search engines that how many web pages are there on the website. In case you're missing out on certain web pages, then Sitemap is there to help you. And robots.txt is used for giving instructions on what are pages to be restricted. That's what. So it's it's beneficial to include both the files. How the sitemap has to be included. We have covered that with the help of Yoast SEO, right? The robots.txt. This plugin I've already got installed on my website. You can go ahead and also install and activate it. The moment you are done with this, it's gonna come. Right, let me see where exactly. But any one we can choose. Choose both of them. Okay. The site, the uh, what do you say? Uh, out of Pratik, uh, out of sitemap and robots, if you're saying, then you have to choose, you didn't have to, I would say both. All right. Okay. The plugin, are you saying, is this one or that one? Okay. If the plugin, then use only one of them. All right. So once you have, so what, let me know if that answers your question. So you've got the virtual robots dot robots dot tasty dot tasty of timed in keyword. Yes, I've typed in keyword. That's correct. And this one, which is virtual robots dot tasty, you can go ahead and include this one. So just use one of the plugin, not use multiple plugins. All right. So once you've got this installed, let me just go ahead and show you where this is gonna come up. So underneath the settings section. The robots.txt, virtual robots.txt is right over here. Settings and virtual robots.txt is right up over here. All right. Now, over here, the uh, command, the command which needs to be given across to search engines for including or excluding certain web pages have to be pasted over here and then click on save changes. But how do we really understand this allow disallow thing? You don't really need to understand that part. All you have to do is in order to get to this particular, in order to get this entire content, which will be pasted over here in this specific uh, plugin, you have to go to certain robots.txt creation tool, robots.txt creator <clears throat> there are quite a many which we will use we will get across the command from there where the the text basically and we'll paste it right up over here so let me just show you the robots.txt generator tool so let's say this is the robots.txt generator tool guys i have included it in the same document <laughs> I'm sorry. Here is the robots.txt generator tool. All right. So we'll be using this and also the plugin. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, it's getting worse for me. All right, so over here, when I'm using this robots.txt file generator, what I have to do is, I have to first of all mention my sitemap URL. The sitemap URL for my website is this. This was, for, the, for my website, this is the sitemap URL, which I'm gonna go ahead and mention right over here. And if there is certain section of my website which I don't want, to be included, you know, I can click on to disallow and let's say I don't want the uh, projects page. So there is a certain project section on my website. I am I'm going ahead and uh, submitting that particular uh, URL right up over here and I don't want this to be allowed for all the 
search engine. So as you can see, the robot section in the file or directories, there are two things. I am giving a cross instruction for all the search engines. So there's Google bot search engine, there's Google mobile search engine, there's Google bot image search engine, there is media partners Google, so there's so many of them. Whenever we do, we do it for all of them. And I am trying to tell you an example, with the help of an example, how this is to be worked across. Let's say if I want all the web pages to be included, then I don't need to type in anything over here. Okay, this is the entire text which I'll copy, which is coming up over here, and I'll paste it back on my website, which is the WordPress website is this, and the virtual robots.txt plugin, which I got open right in front of you, I'll go ahead and paste it right over here. Okay, that's the thing. But let's say if I want to go ahead and exclude certain sections of my website, I can go ahead and mention those sections. So let's say in my website, the section which I want to exclude across, is let's say, I mean, there's a payment gateway page. So there's a payment gateway page. I'm gonna go ahead and exclude all the URLs which have got payment as a part of it, all right? And I'm clicking on to disallow, forward slash payment, and I wanna exclude all of those from all the search engines, the payment gateway pages. All right, so it's... All right, so as you can see, this will actually keep getting uh, added on further more things. I want, let's say, the projects page also not to be crawled and indexed. I can mention that. Now I've got some more content over here, which I can copy and then go back to my WordPress page website and paste it right over here. All right. You know, I have excluded certain uh, admin panel and so forth. That's why it's coming up like this. So all in all, this is pretty simple. What we have to do, step one, we have to get robots.txt plugin being installed on our website, which I have shown you. Then we will go into the settings section of that plugin. There we have the uh, overall text box where we can submit the text, the command basically, which will go to the search engines. And how is that command going to be generated? That command will get generated with the help of the robots.txt generator tool. Now, in the robots.txt file generator tool, we mention across those pages which we want to not to be, which we don't want to be allowed, right? All those pages which we want to allow, they do not need to be mentioned because they will automatically be allowed. They will automatically get crawled and indexed. Only those pages you have to mention which you don't want to get crawled and indexed. That's it. Makes sense. Any questions, any doubt, any queries, guys, feel free to put that across. And pardon me for my health today, guys. I'm sorry if uh, this might be creating trouble for you to also understand. If in case there is some uh, trouble in terms of understanding a particular thing, you can always refer to the recording and you can ask me again and again. I would be more than happy to assist you and repeat the same thing again. It's okay. All right. Thanks, Anuja. So guys, I know this might sound a bit technical, but it is not. The, the sitemap option, enabling the sitemap option was also easy. What we did, we went to the Yoast section, SEO Yoast plugin, which we installed earlier. Then we went to the XML site section, and then we just made sure that it is enabled. That's it. That was the only thing which was to be done. When it comes down to robots.txt, I have made you understood that the plugin which we're going to install across is going to be the virtual robots. All right. Once we have installed virtual robots, by getting into the plugin section, what we have to do is we have to go to the settings tab. In the settings tab, we have got, we'll have virtual robots, which we have installed. We'll click onto that and we'll get the box where we have to mention across all the, uh, the entire content basically. The entire content we'll mention, and this content is going to come across from the robots.txt generator tool. Let me know if you have any questions or queries, guys.
I'm sorry, guys. I'm having tough time. Uh, can we call it a day? I'm. I thought I'm. I'm gonna be. I would be able to, you know, take it further, but it's uh, really becoming difficult for me. So we'll continue from uh, continue ahead with uh, with off-page optimization. On-page has been done in full, and uh, I would request you to work on those five. What do you say? Pages, at least five web pages for your website. The more it is, more better it is always. Try to have as many pages of, for your website and um, work around the on page stuff, the keyword analysis, the keyword mapping, creation of title tag and meta tag. Upload the, uh, uh, you know, those title, meta, meta keywords, meta description, whatever we have worked around. All right. Till then, you're not going to work onto it. It will not come in full. I would uh, request you to please. Uh, I would request everyone to please work onto it. And all those who have been attending the session for the first time, uh, you can anytime connect with Nitin with regards to any questions or queries. And whether it's Shivani, Rahul, I think you're joining in uh, for the first or the second time, so you can anytime ask questions to Nitin. And Ramik, uh, I think this today it's your second session. You do need your website also. You can touch base with Nitin and so forth, uh, or I'll give you the access to the C panel. All right. And uh, in case of any query, any question, guys, you can anytime email me across in between, uh, email me or WhatsApp me. Uh, and I'm sending you both the details. All right, so WhatsApp, I, I'm going to go ahead and procure across a new number and I'll share it with each and every one. Uh, let me just give you, let me just give you one. All right, so I'm giving you my WhatsApp number. Sure, Anuja, you can send it across to me. So this is my email address, guys. As of now, you can use this one and also my WhatsApp number. All right. Makes sense, guys. Thank you so much for uh, for understanding that I'm not doing well, and we'll we'll take it further from here, and we'll connect across next Saturday. Thanks so much. The word file it's the same Mukul, the same word file which I've already shared it with each one of you. I'll if you want, I can send it again. So Mukul, do do check in your email. Uh, the same this is the same word file. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your. Uh, Blessings and all. I'll absolutely take care of myself. Take care, guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.